No matter how good you are at the wrestling, you are at the mercy of those in charge. I mean, even if you are Stone Cold Steve Austin, if you get told your gimmick is a fish who has transformed into a human and is now searching for their salmon family, well, it ain't gonna go well. Some individuals can recover from this, but the majority get totally murked. So prepare yourself, my friends. This is 10 moments wrestlers never recovered from. Number 10, Lance Storm is boring. Now this one annoys me, because it's not true at all. If you do listen to Lance Storm these days, that guy is so smart, holding wrestling accountable in a way few others do. You don't have to agree with his take, but it's always a fascinating insight and will give you an interesting angle on many current stories. Maybe this is why in 2003, Vince McMahon thought it would be a great idea to sort of bury this dude. It's total speculation on my end, but I guess Storm may have come up with some logical plot holes and management didn't like it. So halfway through his match with Garrison Cade, the general manager Steve Austin walked out with a pillow and pretended to fall asleep. Yep, this was boring, apparently. I can only assume the plan was the fans to think the same, but this wasn't accurate. Storm was excellent bell to bell and somebody we can all learn from. You don't start a successful wrestling school because you suck. It also felt like WWE wanted you to change the channel when he was on TV, which is not the idea. And surprise, surprise, this didn't help him at all. Lance retired in 2004, so never really got a chance to put this right. He deserved that opportunity. Guy is really underrated. Number nine, Rick Bogner is Razor Ramon. I mean, nobody could have survived this. You turn up to work and get told you have to pretend to be somebody else. You're done for. This was Vince McMahon's attempt to flip off Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, who had gone to WCW because he did indeed own the copyright on their characters. So screw those guys. He was sure that anybody could do it. We also had a heel Jim Ross introduce them, which is even more confusing. And at the same time, we trolled the audience. He actually pretended that the original Razor and Diesel were coming back. My word. This was such a disaster, even Vince realized he made an error and cut it short, with Bogner's last WW appearance coming at the 1997 Raw Rumble. He wasn't in it for very long and was out the company overall soon after. Never really got a chance on a major stage to show what he could actually do as himself. Ridiculous. Number eight, Anthony Ago goes way in. Now, I don't think this one was as bad as we made out. Didn't go to plan, and in hindsight could have been done better, but it was mostly ill-advised as opposed to terrible. Felt like some people went way over the top. To be fair, however, a go-go himself in an interview did call it flubbing dog shib, so maybe I'm being too nice, and he was right in the sense the 2021 segment lacked action. We focused more on the weigh-in when really, Anthony should have gone screw that, smack Cody Rhodes right in the face. When Paul White started to struggle with the scales though, this just went on and on. Why we didn't just make up a number, I don't know. It's wrestling, you can say whatever you want. We likely should have had a go-go win at the double or nothing match too, but sadly soon after, the former boss Boxer wasn't featured as much, and that's silly. Because I have seen this dude up close and personal, so let's hope 2024 is the year for him. All he needs is another opportunity, and I tell you, man will fly. Number seven, Keith Bearcat Lee. I still don't get this, and it was years ago. It was like we hired Keith Lee to not be Keith Lee. It's like getting mad at me when I turned up bald. What were you expecting? It began on the 27th of September 2021 Raw, though, when Keith had a match with Tazawa and squashed him as the bear cat. Everybody double took when he was announced that way. What was happening? He was allowed to keep wrecking fools for a while, but once again, it was clear he'd been told to tone it down. Not one person told us why this was his gimmick now. There was no reasoning at all. WWE soon realized the error of their ways and slowed things right down. Rather than make it right, they let Keith go in November was just stupid. Very sadly, soon afterwards, Lee suffered some serious health issues, so hopefully today, he is doing better. That's all that really matters. Wrestling will always be secondary to somebody's well-being. But that said, we should not have done any of this. Number six, Rikishi did it for The Rock. Excuse me, The Rock. This was all-time nonsense. It's a shame as the Who Ran Over Steve Austin storyline was actually quite intriguing, and picking Rikishi wasn't the worst idea. The man was super over, and you know what they say. If you turn heel when you have all the momentum as a good guy, sometimes it works perfectly. This was not one of those times. It was just a lack of justification because Big Quiche kept telling us he did it for Duroc. But why did he do it for Duroc? This was in 2000, and I still don't know. If you do actually watch the Raws from this period too, for a small time, WWE hinted this could be racially motivated before realizing that was a very bad idea when they threw it out the window and put the blame on Triple H instead. Come on. It left Rikishi in the worst position because we took the focus off the man and he was just hanging out in limbo. 
he was sort of a heel, but also not. Panicking, the powers that be then tried to make him the fun-loving dancing dude again, but they ruined that too. This was so poorly thought out. It never got back to where it was, and really, we should have just sat down and figured this out. If we didn't, you know the rest. Number five, the Shockmaster stumbles. So, you will be hard pushed to find a character that died as quickly as this. By my takings, it was less than five seconds. Incredible. It has become part of wrestling folklore now, though, because, yep, when Fred Ottman tried to smash through a wall in his new gimmick, he tripped over some flooring he didn't see. It looked so ridiculous the British Bulldog couldn't stop laughing. Even if we had gotten away with this, the Shockmaster was still just going to be a big dude wearing a sparkly Stormtrooper helmet. And what was that? Surely they were going to get sued by Star Wars. There was no coming back from this, although WCW did try and rebook him as a bumbling fool, but that was never going to work. You can't reclaim the joke. It meant we just ended it in a matter of weeks, although fair play to the former Typhoon. He still travels the convention circuit today, making money off this. And there's a nice ending to the tale. Number four, Medusa bins the WWF women's title. In terms of shocking TV, this is right up there. If you were flicking between Raw and Nitro back in the day and saw Medusa on WCW TV drop a WWF title in the bin, well, you lost it. It felt like a war. Medusa herself has talked about how this derailed her career because once World Champs Wrestling was gone, she had no home man was so offended by this he never invited her back it's not like wcw used her all that well either and thankfully she did get a hall of fame nod in 2015 but what did alundra blaze have to talk about then though this incident it just took over i suppose you can argue that it was so momentous that it will stand the test of time still not all that sure it was a great idea mine number three dr death loses it all in the brawl for all it does feel like somebody new learns about this every day, so yes, the Brawl for All was a stupid idea because it was shoot fighting in a predetermined world which just told you everything else on the card was worked. It was so short-sighted. The whole plan, though, was to turn Dr. Death Steve Williams into a real killer so he could feud with one Steve Austin. And that's fine on paper, but again, this was two people legit trying to hurt each other. You never know what could happen. So when Williams hurt his hamstring mid-scrap, one bark gun and his boxing background exploited this and knocked Steve out bad. I mean, it was kind of a mauling. It took any program with Stone Cold off the table because he had been beaten so badly, Dr. Death couldn't portray himself as a tough guy he'd made a career out of. What were we thinking? It didn't help Bart either who got tonked at WrestleMania by pro boxer Butterbean. So in the future, if you want to brook a brawler, just let them win matches. You do have that power for goodness sake. Number two, Bret Hart leaves the WWF. The more you read into it, it really does feel like Bret Hart didn't have a choice. Vince McMahon had told him he wasn't going to live up to the terms of his contract and that he should take the WCW offer that was on the table. Not going to do much for your confidence, is it? It also followed their Montreal screw job, which was a horrible situation, but even then, it was the hottest thing in wrestling, and WCW could have capitalized on this if they wanted to. They did not. Instead, the Hitman arrived as a referee in the Hulk Hogan Sting World title match, and from there, we had no idea what to do with Brett. I'm sure backstage politics played a role, but this was so dumb, everybody wanted to see what Hart was going to do. Very sadly, Brett then got injured as his career came to an end. That was not fitting of such a legend. Yeah, it kind of sucked. Didn't take away from what he achieved, however. The man just deserved better. Number one, Vader irks Shawn Michaels. If you've ever wondered why there's a lot of stories about Shawn Michaels version one, here you go. At SummerSlam 1996, the WWF decided Vader would be a great opponent for HBK because Vader was a killer. Every promotion he'd ever worked in, he wrecked fools, so fans believe the hype. A large reason for this is because the real-life Leon White would work quite snug, however... And do you know who didn't like that? Shawn Michaels. If you go and watch this now, you can see the Heartbreak Kid audibly chastising him. And after the match was done, apparently Michael stormed backstage and said as far as he was concerned, Vader was done. He was right. Somehow he got in the ear of management and within two years, Vader had been reduced to walking out on television and telling the audience he was nothing but a fat piece of shit. Yep. That's what we had him say. Once he left, everybody agreed this was the worst version of the character when thankfully he was able to revive his career by going back to what he had been doing beforehand, ruining folk. When it does come to the WWF, however, yeah, that was done. We never really got the Vader that we wanted. If you did enjoy that, please click the video on the screen right now, which is 10 amazing wrestling moves you'll never see again. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Leave us a comment below and just have a lovely old day. And I'll talk to you again very soon.